about the post. There they go. English Bay Teddy Shulman in between them now is something elusive. And down on the inside, Barbary Bendit. As they pass by us now for the first time, Shulman, three deep, has the lead by a nose. Right there in between them, English Bay Teddy. At the rail now is Barbary Bendit, something elusive. As they go to the turn and Texas Moonshine the trailer. Opening quarter, 23 and one. As they go to the half mile marker, it's now English Bay Teddy with the lead of two. Showman on the outside, second by a neck. Barbary Bandit at the rail in third, length and a half back, something elusive, and about four back to the trailer, Texas Moonshine. As they run past the three eighths into the five sixteenths marker, the half, 46 and four, and English Bay Teddy leads it now by a length and a half. Barbary Bandit, second by a tight length, Something elusive in third, Showman in fourth, and the trailer, Texas Moonshine. As they get set to turn for home, English Bay Teddy has now opened up by three. And down the lane they come, English Bay Teddy in front by four. It is Barbary Bandit second, something elusive third. English Bay Teddy wins it by many. It'll be Barbary Bandit second, something elusive third, Texas Moonshine and Showman. There they go. Closely bunched from the inside, Stanford North put on the early lead. Wicked Knight drives up on the outside, followed by Ms. Stanford. Then down towards the rail, we have Desired Outcome and Emperor of the North. Under the line for the first time, Stanford North leads it over Wicked Knight. Pulling hard down on the inside is Desired Outcome. Into the clubhouse turn they go. The opening quarter comes up in 23 and two. And it's Stanford North with the lead by a length and a half. Wicked Knight second by three quarters of a length. From the outside, Emperor of the North in third. At the rail, now settled down is desired outcome. The trailer, Ms. Stanford. As they run past the three-eighths marker, it's Stanford North with the lead. But now Wicked Knight is engaging on the outside. Two lengths back, desired outcome in third. Followed by Emperor of the North now ridden along in fourth. And Ms. Stanford. Half 47 and two. Three sixteenths from home, new leader. It's now Wicked Knight. And Wicked Knight leads it now by a length and a half. Stanford North in second in between runners now. His desired outcome. And down the lane they come. Wicked Knight with the lead of a length and a half. Desired outcome. Trying to get to him late. Wicked Knight finds a little more. And Wicked Knight will win it. Desired outcome second. Stanford North third. Emperor of the North. And Ms. Stanford. There they go. You don't own me off a step slow. Certifiable right on the early lead. Kalamazoo's on the inside. Knopfler gets away in third. You don't own me's on the outside. At the rail, Lizzie's girl. Barney Google, five back in sixth. They're on the turn and from along the inside, it's Kalamazoo's with the lead by a nose. On the outside, certifiable second by two. Paired off Lizzie's girl and Knopfler. Two and a half lengths back, you don't own me. And about six or seven back to Barney Google. Through the stretch, the opening quarter, 24 and one. They're paired off on the inside. Kalamazoo's on the outside, certifiable. Two and a half lengths back is Lizzie's girl and Knopfler. Two lengths further back now, you don't own me. And still six to the trailer, Barney Google. As they go into the clubhouse turn, the half, 47 and four. 
half mile to run and Kalamazoo's on the inside certifiable right there on the outside Nuffler from the outside Lizzie's girl wrapped up at the rail you don't own me is a length and a half back in fifth sixth is Barney Google as they run to the 516 marker, the field taking closer order, and you don't own me, ranging up three wide as they hit the quarter pole. Six furlongs and 113 flat, and you don't own me with a short lead. At the rail, Kalamazoo's here's Barney Google. He's closing up on the outside. Nuffler right there, Lizzie's girl and certifiable. Eighth of a mile from home, and Barney Google has the lead. And down the lane they come. Barney Google by two. You don't own me in second, Nuffler and Lizzie's girl. Barney Google by four. Barney Google to win it. You don't own me second. Tight for third, either Lizzie's girl or Nuffler. There they go. Billy Fatale from the far outside hustled off for the early lead. Tuxedo now knifes through. At the rail we have Champioso who gets away in third. Two lengths for the back is ATM. Then on the inside now as they hit the turn is Stop Shop and Shelly and Silver Arrow is the trailer. Sprinting away as they pass by us now for the first time. There's Philly Fatale. She's out there by about five. Through the stretch, the opening quarter, a lively 23 flat. And it's Philly Fatale now by three. Up on the outside is Tuxedo at the rail, Champiosa. Big break of five back to ATM. Then we have Stop Shop and Shelly. And Silver Arrow is the trailer, about 10 or 11 off the lead. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And Philly Fatale's lead has shrunk. It's only now three quarters of a lick. Tuxedo now challenging on the outside. Champiosa in third, ATM is fourth, half, 47 and four, as they march down the back stretch. On the inside, Philly Fatal, on the outside, Tuxedo, it's four lengths back down to Champiosa. Silver Arrow making headway at the rail, then on the outside, ATM, and stop, Shop and Shelley. Six furlongs, 113 and four, midway on the turn, Philly Fatal finds a little more, and has shrugged off the challenge on the outside of Tuxedo. Three lengths back, Silver Arrow is coming into it nicely. Three off the lead as they turn for home. Philly Fatale with a short lead, and down the lane they come. Philly Fatale, Tuxedo's on the outside. Silver Arrow is third. Stop, Shop and Shelly trying to close late. Philly Fatale, here's Tuxedo on the outside, but Philly Fatale goes all the way. It'll be Tuxedo second, close for third. Stop, Shop and Shelly and Silver Arrow. There they go. Milo's command from the outside sent right off for the early lead. Right there is Blackstone and to the inside she's on fire. As a roll passes now for the first time, it's Blackstone with the lead now by a little over a length. She's on fire second and arrows at the rail now in third. Milo's command is fourth followed by Union Man in fifth. At the rail is Memorandum in sixth on the outside. Best one yet the trailer. Opening quarter in 23 and two. Past the half mile mark they go. 
and it's Blackstone leading him by a length and a half. She's on fire, second by a little over a length. Then Arrows at the rail in third, Union Man is fourth. On the outside, Milo's Command, followed by Memorandum, and best one yet. As they go past the 516th marker, the half 47 and one. And Blackstone opens up a little now by two. Then Arrow is driving up the inside. She's on fire, Union Man, Milo's Command, back to Memorandum, and best one yet, eighth of a mile from home, and they have to come and catch Blackstone. Blackstone is opened up now by three and a half, and down the lane they come. Blackstone well in command, Denaro second, she's on fire, and Union Man, deep stretch. It's Blackstone, and Blackstone will win it. Denaro second. It'll be she's on fire third, Union Man fourth. There they go. Monty from the outside flies out of there for the early lead. Jersey's image gets away in second at the rail. His deputy's dancer in third. Grim fires on the outside in fourth. Dynamiter is fifth. And the trailer better tone. There goes Monty. He's now sprinted away by about eight. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And Monty leads his field by about eight or nine. It's deputy's dancer in second. Followed by Jersey's image in third. Rim fires on the outside. At the rail is Dynamiter. Trailer is better tone. Opening quarter, a rapid 21 and one. Three for longs to run. And Monty is well in command right now by about 10. In second, Deputy's Dancer. Off the rail now, Dynamiter in third. Followed by better tone at the rail. Rim fire and Jersey's image. Half, 44 and four. 3 16ths from home, and Monty leads it, but the lead is diminishing. Deputy's Dancer, closest pursuer, followed by Dynamiter and at the rail, better tone, and down the lane they come. Monty has now been passed by Deputy's Dancer, and Deputy's Dancer takes command. Closing at the rail is better tone, but Deputy's Dancer got the jump and wins it by two. Better tone second, Dynamiter third, Rimfire fourth. There they go. Ace Deuce breaks sharply down on the inside. Patty Dioro, it's in command right there. Value Max far outside is another Guinness. As they pass by us now for the first time, it's in command has the lead. Patty Dioro stuck down on the rail. Value Max now moves through. Then Vancouver's Hunter, and on the extreme outside, another Guinness. It's two lengths back now to Ace Deuce, who broke sharply, is now taken back in hand. Then it's back to Timeless Shrug and Bodega. Opening quarter in just 23 and two. As they head down the back stretch, it's in command, leads it by three quarters of a length. From the outside, Value Max is second by a length. Patty Dioro skims the rail in third. Another Guinness in fourth. Three lengths back, there's Ace Deuce now moving into it, followed by Vancouver's Hunter, Timeless Shrug and Bodega. Half is 47 flat. Midway on the final turn, three sixteenths from home. It's in command, has the lead by a length and a half. At the rail, it's Patty Dioro, Value Max, trying to wind it up on the outside is Ace Deuce, and down the lane they come. It's in command, Patty Dioro, Ace Deuce, the old timer, grandstand side. 
Patty Dioro. Ace Deuce sits in command. It will be Patty Dioro to win it. Ace Deuce will be second. It's in command third. Vancouver's Hunter fourth. Completing the super high five is Bodega.
And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Saturday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Track announcer Dan Jukic being joined as usual by our paddock host and handicapper Mike Heads. We're going to preview all seven on dog day here at Hastings. <laughs> Hopefully get you headed in the right direction. Clear, sunny skies, quite warm outside, and I'm nice. sure post parades may be shortened down a little bit too. Well, we got 35 minutes. We got uh, eons between races, but uh, yeah, they're they're going to be in the paddock for a while, these horses. But, uh, yeah, seven races today, no carryovers in anything. Uh, as you mentioned, wiener dog races today between all of the races, which is why there's a big gap Little in big between gap. Uh, ra the races today. But, uh, yeah, seven good races. got some nice allowance for you. We've got a we good do. card day. Good weekend of racing. Got some nice horses participating uh, uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, should be a lot of fun. All right, let's get right into the card. We'll start with the opener. Six and a half furlongs, field of five. They are $7,500 down to $5,000 condition claimers. First half of the double, exactor and triactor wagering. Where'd you head to kick it off? Well, obviously Case Kitchen is the horse to beat. Uh, you know, but number one, the horse, you know, did run, didn't show a whole lot of speed last time right. and sat in behind stable mate, love above and beyond. Didn't show her customary speed and she was uninterested early. Hasn't been seen for a while, just show up with a good work in a minute, but she's always been a pretty good work horse. But uh, yeah, just always alarming seeing a horse drop to the $4,000 level. I know she's in for five being a BC bred, but uh, yeah, it's just, I know she'll probably win by five and it'll be a moot point. She'll win a two to five, but I'm going to try the four horse Texas Humor. This horse, uh, I know didn't run anywhere near as fast. This horse is not as fast as Case Kitchen any, by any means, but if we get a case kitchen that is just at 90% or 80% of her abilities with Valerie Valeski and Just Misty going with her. That's, you know, hoping Just Misty does break. Right. Texas Humor is going to get a really good trip in behind the leaders. And that's, that's I, I hate trying to dream up scenarios how horses can win uh, because it doesn't usually happen. But uh, <laughs> I do like Texas Humor's chances if that particular scenario arises. I'm just trying to give you a horse that isn't going to be two to five. Exactly. The source will be eight you know, eight, nine dollar mutual and uh, might be something a little, a good a good alternative maybe to the Case Kitchen, but Case Kitchen is yours. That's where I'm going to head. All right, the opener. Mike's going to head to the four Texas Humor. I'm going to head to the three Case Kitchen. And in case you're looking for jockeys, Antonio Reyes and Brian Budram Singh, they were there. slated to ride at Century Mile this afternoon, this evening, uh, but the races were they canceled. Had, they had nice fl flights over and no, uh, right. <laughs> the races were canceled last night and today. But uh, unfortunately, uh, both were scheduled to be in a hundred thousand dollar stakes race today, which uh, unfortunately was called off due to the smoky conditions, poor air quality in the Edmonton International Airport area, which is Leduc, and right. which is where the racetrack is. Both those races are postponed to next weekend. All right, race two on today's card: field of five. They are five thousand dollar down to four thousand dollar claimers. Exactor try and one dollar pick five wagering. No carryover. Where are you going to head in here? Well, obviously the five on another sunny day is the horse to beat. Uh, this horse has been off for about three weeks now with no works. Another uh, blinker change. Yeah, we'll well, the blinkers off. were on just as a try to do something different, but uh, didn't bring about any better effort. Actually brought up a worse one. So the blinkers come back off. Uh, the one horse, Anami, is just a consistent, solid horse that continues to run rate, good race after good race. Ran into a very good area care last time, and that kind of cost her and ended up losing second that day. But uh, this horse is better than that race, and I, I think this horse is worth following. I put another sunny day in for second in Racino, who actually ran very good uh, uh, first up off the lengthy layoff in right. for third. I, I was 1-5-3. and three. Well, I agree with the rail horse, Anami. Kind of an adaptable horse, too. Yeah. Can press the pace, can go to the front, or can come from, yeah, just, just right off it. Uh, I like this horse today, and uh, Amadale Perez, how can you, you know? No, he does doing everything right. Horses are running for him. He's making all the right decisions right now, and uh, he's batting 41%, and just, you know, he's getting nice horses to ride. So right. you, you, when you're on a live horse, you're going, uh, all he pretty much needs to do is not make a mistake, and he's not making any mistakes. <laughs> no, he's not. All right, race two, we agree on the one, Anami. Moving on to race three now, Maidens, and it is two-year-old time, three and a half furlongs. <laughs> Exactor, try, super effective, pick three, wagering, field of six, Mike. They're all on a level playing field. None of them have started, and I had a lot of trouble with this race. So did I. I mean, obviously, you're going off no form. You have uh, six first-time starters that are you're just guessing off of workouts. These races, you do have to see them in the paddock. To, uh, you know, the form and the workouts in the morning tell you 
a little bit. Some of the story on, 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 on a particular horse, but it doesn't tell you the whole story. You do have to go see them, whether they're composed, uh, just down. really uh, upset and, right. and very fractious, or, you know, you do want to have a look at them, because that'll be probably 50% of how the horse is going to run today. The workouts are 50, I'd say their appearance is the other 50. So have a look at them in the paddock. Uh, the two horse Dreaming Dioro obviously has the best works for Patty Lini, uh, Philly by Always Dreaming, uh, and you know, a freshman sire. Uh, had a good pedigree and a very, it was on the Triple Crown Trail. And a uh, very nice horse is Always Dreaming. Right. Uh, son of Bodie Meister and out of a Med Medaglia Doro mare. It's uh, bought here at the sale, so, uh, and I've seen the horse. This horse is all right. This horse looks the part, and uh, right. uh, I don't know how fast it is out of the gate. Uh, uh, Edgar Mendoza has three of them in here. I'm, <laughs> the works are slow on the one horse Rick Stancer, but I would think that Amadeo would be on the livest one, but maybe I'm wrong. Camille Santo is on one, and Silvino Morales is on another. But uh, Looked like a lot of them have been prepping to go longer. Farther, farther yeah. yeah. That, and then the, this race came up, and uh, you call an audible, and you run the horse to get a race, because you're trying to get in before BC Cup Day. Right. Uh, this is strictly a prep for a lot of them to see if they're going to be good enough, number one, or get a race into them to prep them for BC Cup Day on August 7th when you've got a 50,000 horse stakes race. So uh, that's what, and I put the, the four horse Icy Coffee uh, for Butch Gertzen and uh, Homebred. Yeah, for yeah. Crazy Coffee fame and Coffee Grinder. He had a lot of nice horses, Butch. He always uses the coffee with a K. And uh, <laughs> But Craig McPherson is having a great season. He's got two in here. I don't know which one's the better, but. I just went with Icy Coffee. This is strictly guesses, uh, two, one, and four. But uh, once again, got to see him in the paddock. And I went two, six, and three. So the third, we do agree on the two, Dreaming Dioro. Moving on to the fourth race now, and Mike, it does kick off our $20,000 guaranteed pick four. 20 cent wager, field of five, a mile on a 16th exactor try, and pick four wagering. Tough race in here. I mean, Shammer, every time she drops into a claiming race, yeah. she's right there. But... Not all that proficient going a mile in the 16th. Ria Mia, Belcara Park should be setting the pace. Mm -hmm. Pretty area won't be too far behind her. Where'd you go? Well, I, I want an off the pace horse in here. Uh, Ria Mia's going, Belcara Park's going. Pretty area doesn't need to go, and Amadeo right. will probably tuck the horse in. But Shamra and Wandalita interested me. I want Wandalita. I think she's the best uh, that will enjoy the stretch out to a mile in the 16th. She had the nice win over Ria Mia and Irish Luna in her first start this year. Then came back and run in the Emerald Downs. Uh, was really out of position most of the race. And uh, I just think the horse will be able to settle in behind the speed and, and run a good race. Uh, this is the horse. I know it's not ideal to be off a month and a half, but I'm going to try her over Shamra. And I put the one Ria Mia. I was between Pretty Area and Ria Mia in right. third. But uh, Wanda Lita over Shamra. I think those are your two horses. The two off the pace horses. Mind you, neither one has shown a big affinity to go long. Oh, no, Shamra I hasn't. With, with chances, Wanda Lita, this will be her second or er, her third try at it, but does have one third. Right. So she's she's interesting. I, I like I like Wanda Lita over Shamra. I agree. I got the same two in the top two position, three and two. We agree in the fourth. Kicks off that pick four, guaranteed at twenty grand with the three, Juan Delita. Out of the fifth race now, field of six. In this claiming event, they're gonna go six and a half, exactor, try, superfecta, and pick three, wagering. Well, Amanda's taking a big drop in here. It's uh, one drop. Well, yeah. 16 day, that's yeah. the only drop you cutting get her, for an on three. C cutting her price in half, though. Yeah. I'm gonna head her way. Silvina Morales does ride for Trainer Barbara. Yeah, it's not like dropping from 16 open to 8,000 open. This is a, that there is no middle uh, middle ground. dropping point from 16,000 on three. Your e next easiest race is the 8,000 on three, and you're in for 10 being a BC bred. But right. uh, 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 an okay third behind Love Above and Beyond and in to go gold last time. But there is some speed in here, and I think she should get a good pace scenario. I went with Tam Tricky. Uh, I'm just. She was a good second behind Indiana. Indiana is just running so good right now. Right. Just unfortunate to run into a sharp filly that's won three in a row. And Tam Tricky just had to settle for second that day. But there is speed in the race. That's the only, my only concern with her. But there isn't breakneck speed. No. Uh, Visenya has speed. Anacock Caesar has speed, but didn't get out there last time. Carlos Honor has a little bit of speed. But Tam Tricky could find her way to the front without too much uh, bother. Penalty to Rangers is speed, but 22, Comes and, four, up. 22 and 4 speed. Yeah, comes it's, off a maiden score. We're not 22 flatting it or anything here. So, uh, tam tricky for me over Amanda. And I put 9 o'clock Caesar in for third. All right, race five. Mike's heading to the four. Tam tricky. I'm going to head to the five. Amanda. 
Moving on to race six now on today's card. Only Scratch currently in this race. Scratch is a four, Bazinga Karma. Six and a half furlongs for this field of five now. They are Maidens, Exactor Tri, Superfecta. Late double starts here. An Army of Light blinkers off. It's been away from the races, but for a long time. But certainly has some uh, decent good, works. Yeah, good yep. works coming into the race. Good works. Uh, this is not a tough 25 at all. This race come up pretty light, and uh, I'll take Alarmy of Light. Uh, you know, if he can run a little bit, I think he can win the race today. Uh, Cairo Crusader is is interesting as well. I know he doesn't appear to be a horse that wants to sprint, but the blinkers come off. Right. They tried him for his first two runs this year with blinkers, but he's just running one pace, almost like a distance horse. And I know they tried to get him in going along, but the races haven't filled, so he's back in sprinting today for the RNH stable. And uh, Rich Bell Goldman will get the call. And uh, I'll put the five Crown Council in for third since I scratched out of the four horse. Let's put the five Crown Council in. Uh, just the one run this year at Emerald. Uh, missed the break and uh, was a disgrace. Got to be seven links in a heat that went in 115 and changed. So it was him or my man Stan. Uh, but I'm going to go 135. All right. Race six, we agree on the rail horse. Number one, an army of light. Moving on to the seventh and final event now, Phillies and Mares. We're going to send them a mile in the 16th. Exactor Tri, Superfecta, and 20 cents, super high five wagering. It's a good field of seven because a lot of these Phillies and Mares love to go long. Yeah, and they love to. There's some speed in here with uh, the three, six, and seven, and it's probably going to play out nicely for the five Irish Luna again. Uh, just finished blitzing this field in 144 flat. They don't jump her up, they run her right back for the same tag. Right. And, uh, Amadel Perez back aboard. She's going to be tough to beat. She pays the penalty for winning. She packs a buck 24. So she does have four extra pounds, but I don't know if it's going to stop her. So I got her to win it. I uh, put the two horse Zita Marie in for second. She was finished second behind uh, Good effort last time. Uh, Irish Luna last time. Yes, it was. A uh, little too far back, but uh, I think that she's up closer. She, she doesn't have a big move to her. She needs to be stalking the speed. And I mean stalking the speed like with her nose to the tail of the horses in front of her. And I think that's where she runs her best races. Uh, not six, seven, eight, nine lengths back. But uh, she come running on good. Uh, just couldn't get to Irish Luna, who was too good. And I put the one horse, Artistic Jeweler, in for third. She's on a bit of a class drop here, and she does like to go long. Rich Balgobin will take over in the irons today, as, Emmett, or as Antonio is out of town. But I went five, two, and one. Artistic Jeweler, a two-time winner at today's distance, so certainly will appreciate it, as will the four ostracize. This might yep. be my long shot play today. Uh, had the one run going long last time, but it's only had the two runs so far in 2023. She takes the class drop also, and I think that this horse might be positioned well today. Yeah, uh, she's been in some ambitious spots since since being claimed. She was in a non-two allowance against uh, Capilou Candy and was well back throughout. And then ran against the boys. It was a filler for Stable 8 Stay Fantastic who won the race, uh, but hasn't been seen since June the 3rd. Uh, but you're right, she has the ability to win it here. Right. She's got speed. Look for uh, Silvino to have her up close to the pace because that's what she likes to do. She likes to dog the pace. And uh, she's very good when she's in the clear, no dirt, hitting her in the face. And uh, you know, no, she's live. There's, there's no standout. No. Uh, well, Iris Luna is a standout. But the balance of the field, there's nothing between them. The other six runners don't pass the pepper. Silk Stilettos, if the pace scenario is right. Uh, Harlan's, Harlan's Angel's, Angel's sharp. sharp. She's moving up, but she's sharp. You know, she's going to need to move forward off of the race. But there's seven good mares in here. And, but Irish Luna has the best resume. Uh, especially off of her last race. All right, race seven, we agree in the five, Irish Luna. That does wrap up the Saturday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Don't forget live racing tomorrow. First race will be 2 p.m. We're going to have a bunch of Mustang horses out on the tarmac tomorrow, as we do have a Mustang car show. And don't forget, one week today, it is the Cup. It is a yep. ticketed event. So if you want to uh, more information on it, go to comegetfancy.com about purchasing tickets, and then we revert back to our Sunday, which is just free admission. Regular, yeah, Come Get Fancy. It's on the tow board. I think there's an ad yeah. on the tow board. If you're here in attendance, and you check out the tow board. That's how you can get tickets. I know it's a bit of an inconvenience for some of our patrons, but it's just the one day, and uh, there'll be a lot of people out here. It'll be a it fun be. day, and uh, yeah, that's next Saturday, uh, the cup day. All right, as we leave you, here's a complete look at our selections for today's card. Till tomorrow. Good luck, everyone. Have a good day.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hastings. Track condition at present listed as track fast. Special welcome to everyone joining us for our Saturday card. Now please turn to the official programs for this afternoon's corrections and changes. In the first number five, Just Misty is five pounds over. Please note following races one through five, we will have five heats of the Wiener Dog Racing. The top two finishers will move to the sixth race and the final. Race two has no changes and no carryover in the $1 pick five. In the third, number one, Rick Stancer is one pound over. Number two, Dreaming Dioro, the owner line, should read Joe and Gloria Russo and carries three pounds over. Number four, Icy Coffee is five over. Number six, Hartley Manor is five pounds over. Now please turn to the fourth. Race four has no changes, but it does kick off our $20,000 guaranteed pick four. In the fifth, number two, nine o'clock Caesar, five pounds over. Number six, penalty to Rangers is three pounds over. In the sixth, Currently our only scratch is in the sixth, number four, Bazinga Karma. Scratch the four, Bazinga Karma from the sixth. Number five, Crown Council is three pounds over. And there are no changes in the seventh. Those are all the changes and corrections to the present time. At this time, Hastings would like to welcome the following groups joining us for our Saturday card. They include Shaughnessy, Dental Office Party, Jeff Jantz, Bachelor Party, Nick Hugh, Birthday Group, Shelley Smizniak Group, Brandon McKay Group. Also joining us on her birthday is Julie Reynolds. Birthday greetings go out to Tara DeBoer. Special welcome to the Brianne Sanders Group, the Pryke Lambert Russell LLP Group. Margaret Young's birthday party, Kirk Patterson's birthday group, the Corey Hansen group. Happy 55th birthday to Sandy Bromeland and brother Jamie Barnes. Special welcome to Scott Hatchery group. Happy birthday to Claudia Monzon. Birthday greetings go out to Natalie Lukanova. And a special welcome to the Hobsey Wobsey Party. Don't forget, live racing does continue here tomorrow, first race, 2 p.m. Please note, one week today, Saturday, July 22nd, this will be a ticketed event here at Hastings for the live card. For more information, go to www.getfancy.com. We will return on Sunday, July 23rd, to our regular free admission. Thank you for your attention, and good luck.
All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hastings Racing Live on a hot, it's just 28 on the TV, it's warm. A little bit of a breeze, kick it up, but warmish conditions here in Vancouver. Post parades will be shortened due to the heat, and we'll try and keep them in the shade as much as we can. They'll get up for the, get out, I don't know, five, six, seven minutes to post for their warm up before they go to the gate. And uh, so you will have probably a little extra time before they head to the gate in 11 minutes. I'm your paddock host, Mike Heads. I'm going to try and fill your brain with as much information about all of the horses running today. Got no opinion on the wiener dogs. Got big fields in the wiener dogs I see today. That was well, what, 11? 33, 44. We got 55 dogs here today. I don't know. 52. We got an eight horse field in the last. 52 dogs participating today in the Wiener Dog Contest. That, that'll be held in the infield of the racetrack between uh, the first five races. After this race, we'll have a little time in between races so that you can enjoy the Wiener Dogs. Give you a little more handicapping time as well. But. Uh, Always popular, the wiener dogs, lots of laughs, and hopefully all goes well today. No lost dogs anywhere in the infield. All right, we've got a field of five, $4,000 claimers here, non-three lifetime. They vary in claiming price from three grand all the way up to 7,500. Six and a half will be to the distance. First half of your early double. We also have exactas and tries for you, as well as win play show here on the first. As we look at number one, there's Auntie J for uh, the Willow Creek Farms and Sean Lawson. Crushed to field the maidens in her, her last start in 2022. Hasn't been seen since then, but that's four good. Five-eighths of a mile moves. Not sure why the horse is taking this long to get to the races, but obviously a little history there. A little gap between the June 17th work and the July 9th work. That's 22 days, three weeks in between workouts. But she looks good here in the paddock. The race hasn't come up easy for her. You'd think a four non three would, mind you, she's eligible for the four non two. But uh, it's kind of come up tough for the level with some class droppers in here. Currently sitting at 6-1 to one with apprentice Fraser Abley. Number two will be Valerie Valeski. She showed good speed in her last. Didn't get beat much behind Anami and no people. She figures in here. Silvina Morales will be aboard for the Robin Sheena Maven. She's got speed. Four to one on the board on her. Number three will be Kay's Kitchen. Adding front bandages today. Big class drop from 16 on three down to the four. Does have a good work uh, last weekend in a minute flat. I mean, she's the best. Got the best resume by anyone in here. Numbers crush the field. But always you must be alarmed that she's making this drop. Because there was an 8,000 on three that filled that she could have been in. And they opted for the four, which tells me, you know, they probably don't want to own her after this race. Nine to five on Key's Kitchen. Number four will be Texas Humor. This is what I'm going to land on. I think there's some speed in here. Is she as good as Key's Kitchen if they both run their good best race? No. But I just think the pace scenario could be favorable for Texas Humor. She's going to sit off the pace, and I think she's got it sitting on another good race for the hot Eric Gutierrez stable. And number five will be Just Misty. She's just got to get out of the gate. That's her issue. You know, obviously, she's been missing it by three or four lengths. Got to get her done out of the gate. That's a big key for, for her. She's good enough if she does everything right. All right, there's your field of five here in the opener. Seven minutes to post. Let's send it up to the down for the post parade of race number one. Ha <laughs> ha 
the horses on the track at Hastings for the opener. It's a field of five. They're going to go six and one half furlongs. First half of the daily double. Exactor and Triactor wagering post time in six minutes. Here's the field number one, Auntie J. Owned by the Willow Creek Farms, the rider is Apprentice Fraser Abley. Two, Valerie Valeski, owned by Robin Sheena Maben. Silvino Morales aboard. Number three is Kay's Kitchen, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, with Kamal Santo in the tack. Four, Texas Humor, owned by the G.O. Stables, Jose Sanchez rides. And number five, Just Misty, Owned by Ed Claggett, Craig McPherson, and Foster Armstrong with Kiron Kalawan. Five minutes to post time. All right, let's kick off our Saturday card by going down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. Just five minutes here from the opener. Post parades have been shortened due to the temperatures here today. There is a nice breeze, luckily keeping things at bay here. I went to the even money favorite in here right now, number three, Kay's Kitchen. This horse is coming, dropping in class value, had a nice work coming into this race. I think she will be the one to beat in here for sure. Number four, Texas Humor. Ran really well last time out to get that win. Jose Sanchez does a lot of morning work for Eric and in particularly with this horse. And rounding out my top three is the outside horse, Just Misty, two starts back, was declared a non-starter. She got held in the gate and totally missed the break last time out. So hopefully if she can get the gate back under control, break a little sharper and cleaner away from there, she'll have better success and not leave herself so much work at the end. I went three, four, five here for the opener. You got four minutes to make your wagers, get them in early and best of luck. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. Lord again now for the open air at Hastings. Anti J to the inside gate. Valerie Valeski. Kay's Kitchen. Texas Humor. The outside gate just misty. Five in. They're at the post. Kay's Kitchen, a little fractious in the gate. Still waiting on the outside now for just Misty. Just Misty now backs out once again. Open the fronts for Jess Misty. She goes in without the rider. They'll be reunited inside the gate. Fronts closed, five in. They're at the post. There they go. Valerie Valeski, quick at the break and on the early lead. From the outside now, here comes Just Misty rolling up on the outside. It's Auntie J at the rail in third, followed by Kay's Kitchen and Texas Humor. As they go to the clubhouse turn, trying to hold the rail is Auntie J pressing on the outside, Just Misty. It's two lengths back to Valerie Valeski. Three lengths for the back is Kay's Kitchen and three to Texas Humor. Pass a half mile mark and they go. Opening quarter, 22 and 1. As they head down the back stretch from the outside, just Misty pops ahead in front. Anti J, second by two. Valerie Valeski, ridden along now in third. Two and a half legs back is Kay's Kitchen and now three and a half to Texas Humor. As they race towards the quarter pole, the half, 45 and 3. And now just Misty has taken the lead. Valerie Valeski rolling up on the outside. Kay's Kitchen, three off it in third. Losing ground at the rail is Auntie J. Trailer is Texas Humor. 
as they turn for home. It is now with the lead, just Misty. But here's Kay's Kitchen, rambling up on the outside. Kay's Kitchen now strikes the front. It's Kay's Kitchen to win the opener. Just Misty second, Valerie Valeski third, Texas Humor and Auntie J. On the board, the unofficial winner, number three, Kay's Kitchen. Number five, Just Misty, second. Number two, Valerie Valeski, third. And number four, Texas Humor, fourth. Three, five, two, four on the board. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of the opener, number three, Kay's Kitchen. She's owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds. This trained by Edgar Mendoza, assisted by Christina Mann. The winning rider, Kamal Santo. Kay's Kitchen, a four-year-old filly by Jersey Town, out of Windy. Bred in BC by the owners, the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds. The result is official. The three five two dollar exacta was worth fourteen dollars. Three five two two dollar try was thirty five fifty. Final running time was one eighteen and one one hundredth.
There was a claim in that first race through a two-way shake. Number three, Kay's Kitchen, claimed by Giovanni Oladi Davia and Nicole Rycroft. Trainer, Giovanni Oladi. Please note that the replays will follow our first Wiener Dog race. The Wiener Dog entrants are enlisted in your program today as they march into the winner's enclosure. Number one will be Link for Ashlyn. Number two is Ziggy Piggy for Natasha. Number three is Milo for Erica. Number four is Mookie for Hannah. Number five, Penelope for Samantha. Number six is Toby for Jared. Seven is Walter for Jessica. Number eight will be Buster for Lorraine. Number nine is Ollie for Amy. Number 10 is Doby for Halen. At number 11, Stanley for Kadsha. Please note they will start from the white line. The handlers are not allowed to go across that red line. They must let the dog cross the orange line. Then they can collar their dog. The dogs will be released on the flag dropping. So as they line up from the tote board out, it'll be one through 11. The top two finishers will advance to the final. And the judges and stewards final finishings will be official. All right, the handlers are all in place with the flag up. Waiting for the official start. And the flag has been released from the inside. It's Link moving through now. There goes Walter. Wow. Also right there was Ziggy Piggy. It's a mad scramble at the end. going to take a quick look on the replay here. We think it's seven Walter who crossed the line first as they were heading left and right and not actually crossing the finish line. We are going to go to replay. 
to determine the top two finishers. There's the replay and they're off. There's the seven on the far outside. Not quite sure what happened to him. All right, the official order from the stewards is number seven, Walter was the winner. Number two, Ziggy Piggy was second. Congratulations to our top two finishers. They move on to the final and we'll be back after race two with heat two. As in the first race, there was a claim. There was a claim dropped on the winner, number seven, in the first heat, which was Walter, but the claim was voided. So Walter stays with his owner.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number two here at Hastings. Well, a good run from Case Kitchen to kick off the day. Things looked a little, hmm, I would say nerve-wracking, but she was a little farther back than she normally is, but came running under Kamal Santo and got the money for the Todd Mountain Thoroughbred, Zigger Mendoza. Case Kitchen as the even money favorite kicks off our wiener dog Saturday here. And looks like Walter won the first heat of the wiener dogs. Oh no, I got a claim foul on that one. I don't even know if he crossed the line. But. All right, field of five. Phillies and Maris here, $4,000 claimers. They're going to go six and a half furlongs. Kick it off to pick five here. No carryover, but your pick five starts here. Always a good pool. Probably going to be a good pool today because there's not a lot going on. No California, no Alberta. We're one of the only products running today. Uh, so we should, s and we saw a pretty good handle in race number one. So we're one of the few tracks uh, participating uh, on the West Coast. So come on, let's kick up this uh, pick five with a nice pool. We also have exact and triactor wagering here on the second. Here's the one. This is a Nami. First up, run off the claim. For uh, Tanya Litkovitz and uh, trainer Nicole Rycroft. Continues to be busy. Claimed uh, Kay's Kitchen under the opener with Giovanni Alalde. Hemadale Perez rides an Ami. Kind of a disappointing run last time. Beating eight lengths to Harry Karen Racino. I know she's better than that. She should get a good trip on or near the lead. She's pretty versatile type. I don't mind her at all today. I've taken her to win it, you know, and a, not a guess. But I mean, she's two to one right now, but she's probably not as good on her best day as another sunny day. But I just think Anami's in good form, and maybe another sunny day is I'm not going to say on the decline, but uh, just Anami's going good right now, and I think her A race is going to make her pretty tough today. I think we'll see it. And you never go wrong having Amadeo either. Number two will be back zone for Fred and Sheldon Kwan. Harold Barraby trains. Curry Powell up. Shortens back up to six and a half after disputing a hot pace going long. Source is interesting in here. There's no standout in this race. She's nine to two. She's certainly getting the respect she deserves. Three will be Racino for the Hastings Racing Club and Pat Jarvis. Number three. There she is, the gray. Good secondary Kara last time. That was just her first run of the year, so we can forgive her for that. She got beat four lengths to a very good Ari Karras, so I think she'll be better today. But she's on her game. She's nice. Racino is a pretty solid $4,000 mare. Number four will be walking the walk. She needs to see a pace scenario in front of her. She might get it with a Nami. Racino and another sunny day hooking up. But that's the kind of pace scenario she needs to make her a winner. We saw an off-the-pace win with Kay's Kitchen in the opener, so you know the track's playing fair and it's not f hugely favoring speed. Scott Williams rides for the side pot stables and Dino Condolinos. And the five will be another sunny day. Blinkers off. Tried blinkers on the five. The five. The five. Another sunny day. There she is. Front bandage is on again today. But the blinker's off. Chased a hot pace last time. That was just too quick for her. She'll be better today. I've got her for a second. I definitely see. She's the worst to beat. I, I did go one, five, and three, but really no love for anyone. This is a good betting race. Should be a lot of fun. Good luck here in race two. The start of your pick five today, which starts with no carryover, but should be a good pot.
The horses on the track at Hastings for race number two. Field of five, they're going to go six and one half furlongs. Second half of the early double, exactor, try, and one dollar pick five wagering. Post time in six minutes. Here's the field number one, Anami, owned by Tanya Lipkovitz, the riders Amadeo Perez. Number two is Back Zone, owned by Fred Kwan and Sheldon Kwan, Curry Powell Rides. Three, Racino, owned by the Hastings Racing Club, the rider Kiran Kelawan. Number four, Walk in the Walk, owned by the Side Pot Stables, Scott Williams in the Tack. And number five, Another Sunny Day, owned by Bob Luffler. Brian Killens and Gord McCormick. The rider is Silvino Morales. Five minutes to post time.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. Just a note from that first race that the claim on number three, Kay's Kitchen, has been voided. The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. Lord again now for the second at Hastings. First one up will be Anami. Outside gate is another sunny day. Walk in the walk. Racino and back zone. Five in. They're at the post. There they go. From the rail, Anami put on the early lead. Right there is back zone Racino. Another sunny day on the far outside. Early trailer walking the walk. As they go under the line for the first time, it is Anami from the rail, back zone, pressing, and three deep. There goes another sunny day. It's two lengths back down to Racino in fourth, and three back is walking the walk. As they go into the turn, the opening quarter, 23 flat, half mile to run, and from the inside, Anami leads it by a nose. Right there, back zone, second by two. Another sunny day, third by two and a half. Racino is fourth by about five, and walk in the walk, the trailer. As they run to the 516 Sparker, Anami from the rail with the lead, back zone pressing on the outside. Half, 46 and two, quarter mile from home, and it is Anami with the lead. Back zone second, another sunny day. Racino's three off and in fourth, and now walk in the walk starting to close ground. As they turn for home, it's Anami now by two. And down the lane they come. Anami leads it by two. Another sunny day. Here's Racino far outside. Anami, Racino walking the walk. Anami will win it. Racino second. Another sunny day. Walking the walk. And back zone.
On the board, the unofficial winner, number one, Anami. Number three, Racino, second. Number five, another sunny day, third. Four, walk in the walk, fourth, one, three, five, four. And just a reminder, on hand today is the downtown Eastside Neighborhood House. They are selling 50-50 tickets. Watch for the volunteers. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race two, number one, Anami. She's owned by Tanya Lipkovitz, trained by Nicole Rycroft, the winning rider, Amadeo Perez. Anami is a four-year-old filly by Numani out of Ansetti. Bred in BC by Oli Nielsen. The result is official. One three exactor, two dollar price was twenty five twenty. Two dollar try was fifty dollars and forty cents. Daily double, two dollar price was twelve eighty. Final running time, 117 and 92, one hundredths. Up next will be our second heat of our wiener dog races. Scratch the four, Reggie, and scratch the seven, Penny. It's now a field of nine. All right, now crossing the track onto the infield is our second heat in the Wiener Dog races today. Number one is Douglas for Evan. Number two is Nugget for Leah. Number three is Oscar for Jeannie. Once again, scratch the four, Reggie. Number five is Hank for Kaylee. Number six is Lucy for Carmen. Scratch the seven. Number eight is Darla. For Midori. Number nine is Adley for Alisa. Number 10 is Hori for Lauren. And number 11 is 
Savaloy for Rachel and Gabriel. Dogs are taking their marks. We'll be set to go with Heat 2. Final dog taking their place. They're getting their final instructions from the starter. Leashes are off. Flag is up. For the catchers, you must be behind the red line. Please move back. Flag is down, dogs are off, and it is Nugget who's out there. Oh, right there also at the wire was the eight, Darla. Darla and Nugget in a picture finish will wait for the official placings. Okay, unofficially right now, unofficial winner will be the eight, Darla. Second, moving on to the final, will be the two nugget. And there's the picture finish. Very close. 8-2, but they do both move on to the final.
So obviously we don't have a whole lot of form to go on other than the, their morning workouts and their appearance today. Off of workouts, I did go with the the two horse dreaming Duro, but we'll see how things play out. So we do watch them in the, through the saddling procedure. Well, congratulations to start off to Tammy Lipkovitz is uh, Anami. And trainer Nicole Rycroft is Anami wins race number two under Amadeo Perez. Ended up not being a lot of speed in the race, and uh, Amadeo took full advantage and got the win. All right, here's the one. This is Rick's Dancer. One of three Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds owned runners in here. Ron and Ray Fawcett owned the one, the five, in partnership with James Redekop. And They solely own the one and the six. So they got one, five, and six in here. They got a lot of interest. As they were very busy at the two-year-old sale last year. And thank you to them for doing that. They always active in the past few years at the sale. Bought this son of Lent off of uh, the breeder Rick Camps. Out of the Regal Intention Mare, another dance. Nothing has really been divulged in his morning workouts. Uh, a 41 on June the 9th. A week later, 51 and 2. And then... Three weeks later, 106 flat. And then Amadeo shows up on the horse. It's just kind of an odd progression. But I do respect the fact that Edgar can get a horse ready. And Amadeo shows up on the horse. And I obviously respect the connections. So uh, this one's getting play at 2-1. to one, Despite the slowish works. The horse is just uh, now rearing up during the saddling procedure. Hopefully, uh, he gets to behave a bit. They get him in the corner and see if... Point it in towards the wall. Get him to put up with the saddling procedure. But yeah, good connections. Nice pedigree. Cost about 18000 at the sale last uh, September. Continues to just do little crow hops. But, uh, not something you want to see when you're wagering it with a horse going three and a half furlongs. Number two will be Dreaming Dioro. There's a good look at him debuting in Blinkers. He's got the, she's got the fastest works. This is a Philly. There are a few Phillies in here, but. Taking on the boys, she's looks like she's doing things right in the morning. Thirty-five and four on July first showed no ill effects from that work. Came back and worked in forty-eight once again out of the gate. Karen Kellowan will be aboard. Another one that cost about eighteen thousand at the sale. This was a Kentucky bred. Eight to five for owner trainer Patty Leaney. Three will be Stormy Runner, one of two Craig McPherson runners in here. Saddles both the three and the four. This one's owned by uh, Army Armstrong and Ed Claggett. The son of Storm Victory, certainly bred to be quick. Looks very racy, I'll tell you, I'll give you that. This horse looks very good here in the paddock. Kind of a smart looking individual. Very athletic. If I could change a pick, I would definitely put this one on the ticket. That's the three stormy runner. Rich Balgovin will be aboard. He's done good things with Craig. They're batting 56% this year. Five for nine. When Ridge rides uh, Craig's horses, they're generally pretty, pretty live. Number four is Icy, Co Icy Coffee. Another filly by uh, Sun Gold. 
Works kind of mirror the three horse Stormy Runner. They've a lot of common works out of the gate and other than their July 9th work. There's a good look at Icy Coffee. Another good looking. Craig's got two really nice uh, athletic looking uh, youngsters here. No blinkers. Uh, I like it. It would definitely get top marks from me for their paddock appearance. That's the three and the four. Both good prices. Nine to two right now on Icy Coffee for owner breeder uh, Butch Gordson. Five will be Beckett's best. Colt by uh, Sun Gold out of the uh, nice race mare. Gabby got her away. Looks like this one's been prepping to go a little farther, but uh, a couple of five eights and 103 and 102 and four. Camille Santo will ride. And number six will be Hartley Manor. Philly by Sun Gold. Cost about 16000 at the sale. Been working with uh, the five horse Beckett's back in the morning. A little jazzed up, but she's. Looks pretty sharp here in the paddock. Does Hartley Manor? Perhaps the best behaved of the three. Actually, the five horse uh, Beckett's best was fine. The only one that acted up of his trio was. Uh, the one horse, uh, Rick Stasser, but he's all comfortable now and got Ryder Amadeo Perez up as they make their way out onto the track. All right, the horses are heading out for post parade. As you look at the one, oh, as you don't look at the one, we got picks up there now. I went 2 1 and 4. But uh, after seeing him in the paddock, uh, I definitely would include the three-horse Stormy Runner. He looks pretty racy. All right, good luck here in race number three. Two-year-olds going three and a half furlongs. Horses on the track at Hastings for race number three. Two-year-olds to go three and a half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, pick three wagering. Post time in five minutes. The owner line on number two, Dreaming Dioro, is Joe and Gloria Russo. Please note number three, Stormy Runner excused from post parade. Here's the field number one, Rick Stancer, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, Amadeo Perez rides. Two, Dreaming Dioro, on by Joe and Gloria Russo, Kiran Kelawan in the saddle. Three, Stormy Runner, on by Ed Claggett and Foster Armstrong with Ridge Balgobin. Number four, Icy Coffee, on by Butch Gortson, Jose Sanchez to ride. Number five, Beckett's Best, on by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds and James Redekop, the rider Kamal Santo. And number six is Hartley Manor, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, Silvino Morales aboard. Three minutes to post time. Just three minutes to post time. Let's go down to the paddock area and Bailey Williams. 
Thank you, Dan. Just two minutes away here from two-year-old action going three and a half furlongs. I went to the favorite in here, currently three to five on the tow board, my top choice, and that's Dreaming De Oro, a Philly, one of three fillies here taking on the boys. She has a very solid build. She was well schooled here in the paddock and on post parade. Blinkers on for her first start. She has a lot of really quick works from the gate. I think that if she can get away clean from that inside post, it'll be a catch me if you can. Number six, Hartley Manor is my second choice. Again, another filly taking on the boys. Simply for the fact that I like the outside post. Two-year-olds get stuck standing in the gate a little bit longer when you can get into that outside post, break and run. On 13 to 1, a little bit of a value play there. And rounding out my top three is the one, Rick's dancer, Amadeo Perez, currently 3 to 1. Only disadvantage is that rail position. I went 2 6 1 here in race number three. Some two year olds, best of luck. The horses have reached the starting gate.
Holding it now for the third at Hastings. Two-year-olds to go three and a half furlongs. Rex Dancer, the first one up. Six first-time starters. Next one up will be Dreaming Dioro. I see copy goes in in the orange. Stormy Runner, gate three. Stormy Runner goes in. Next one up is Beckett's Best. And then Hartley Manor to the outside gate. Hartley Manor in. Six in. They're at the post. There they go. Hartley Manor from the outside catches a flyer and opens a two-length lead. Moving up on the far outside is Beckett's Best. Now down at the rail is Dreaming Dioro. In between them is Stormy Runner, Icy Copy, and Rick Stancer. Into the far turn they go, and Hartley Manor has opened up by two. Dreaming Dioro pushed along in second on the outside. Beckett's Best in third. Four lengths back now is Stormy Runner up the turn into the stretch and Hartley Manor leads it by two and a half. Dreaming Dioro in second on the outside. Beckett's Best is third. Deep stretch. It's Hartley Manor winning the debut by three. Very close for second. Dreaming Dioro, Beckett's Best, and a late closing Stormy Runner followed by Rick Stancer and Icy Copy. On the board, the unofficial winner, number six, Hartley Manor. There is a photo for second. Hold all tickets, six, and a photo. In the photo for second, number two, Dreaming Dioro, second. Number five, Beckett's Best, third. And number three, Stormy Runner completes the Superfecta. Six, two, five, three on the board.
Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race three, number six, Hartley Manor. She's owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, trained by Edgar Mendoza, assisted by Christina Mon, winning rider, Silvino Morales. Hartley Manor is a two-year-old filly by Sun Gold out of Majestic Skyline, bred in BC by Peter Redekop, BC Limited. The result is official. Six to exacta was forty dollars and twenty cents, two dollar price. Six to five, two dollar try was one twenty seven. Twenty cent super was forty four dollars thirty three cents. Final running time for the three and a half furlongs, 40 and 14 one hundredths. In the fourth, this race kicks off our $20,000 guaranteed pick four. No changes. Post time is 25 minutes away at 345. All right, up next will be our third heat of the Wiener Dog races. Take out the one Timbit. Take out the six, Penelope. Number 11 now will be Beans. As the competitors cross onto the track and to the infield, here's your field. Uh, once again, scratch the one Timbit. We'll see this one later. Number two is Minnie for Hannah and Philip. Number three is Worst for Bohanna. Number four is Morty for Jess. Number five is Bonnie for Karen. Take up Penelope. We'll see this dog a little later. Number seven is Abigail for Andrew. Number eight, Wilma the Ween for Corrine. Nine is Gloria for Vicky. Number 10 is Nishi for Phil. And once again, number 11 will be Beans for Serena. All right, everyone's taking their mark. Once again, the handlers must be behind the red line. All right, everyone's getting their final instructions. They're all waving. The flag is up. And they're off in heat three. Very close finish. It's Mini moving through. Oh, right there on the outside. Let's take a quick look. That's the 10 dog. That's Nishi. Going to be another photo here. We'll determine who the top two are. We're going to ask for the replay one more time. Take a look at the replay. We believe, though, it might have been number 10, Nishi, as the winner. There's the finish, and it looks like, yes, Nishi does cross first. And number three, worst, was second. So 10 Nishi and three worst move on to the final after race six.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number four here at Hastings. This kicks off the $20,000 guaranteed uh, pick four payout pool. Got a field of five talented Phillies and Mares in for 25. Or up to, well, actually, they're all in for 32, other than Wanda Lita. She's in for the 25, and Belcara Park fits the non four allowance condition, so she's not in for the price. Exacta and Triactor wagering. Go to mile of 16th here. You don't see too many of these races throughout the year. These high end claiming for Phillies and Mares going long, so this is a rare opportunity for them to strut their stuff. But congratulations in race number three to uh, Ron and Ray Fawcett's uh, Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds Philly, uh, Hartley Manor. Uh, wow, did she ever leave the gate with her tail on fire. Hats off to trainer Edgar Mendoza and Christina Mann had this one ready to roll and Silvina Morales guided her around the track nicely in 40 and change. But Hartley Manor remains unbeaten. Perfect one for one in her racing career. Here's the one, this is Ria Mia. She's got good speed. Look for uh, Kamal Sando to have her on or near the lead, but there's some, a little bit of gas in here. At Belcara Park, pretty area. There's a lot of them that kind of want to be near the lead, even Wanda Lita. But Ria Mia is probably the fastest of them all. Kind of hesitated at the break last time, which caused her to not be part of a pace that was supposed to be quick. Ended up seeing Weeby 3 on a loose and pretty easy lead uh, through 24 47 4. But uh, Ria Mia was in, not in a comfortable position at all, and, and it really shows as she was far back at the end, beating 20 lengths in the Monashi. But she's back in claiming company. Uh, she's generally pretty tough in claiming company. The Mono 16th is the tricky part, though, for her. She does have the one win at the distance. But with all the pace pressure, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to have troubles putting her in the winner's circle today. But we'll see how it plays out. She's 7-2. to two. That's a good look at Ria Mia. Edgar's been pretty busy. He saddled three in the last, got two to saddle in here, so the tack's still not on Ria Mia with nine minutes to post. Mind you, they came up here pretty late. Number two will be Shamra. I like her chances today. I know she's not big on going a mile to 16th, but in this race, with the the possibility of a three-horse speed duel, I mean, a speed duel, but no one's getting away cheap on the head end in this race. I think she's got a good off-the-pace chance. Bridge Bell Gobin subbing for Brian Boudram Singh, who's in Alberta today, uh, enjoying the smoke. Him and Antonio Reyes were out there to ride in a $100,000 stakes race, but unfortunately the races were called off, so the boys will be back tomorrow. But uh, Ridge gets the call on Shamra. She's pretty good here in the paddock. Generally, she washes out, but she's in good spirits today for the Sapphire Stables, Ted Feenstra and uh, trainer Jimmy Loseth. And that's his wife, uh, Sandra, on the head end. Five to two on uh, Shamra, who's a two-time winner this year. Three will be Wanda Lita. Uh, I did take her on top. I think she's the one that's going to like him on the 16th. I think she's the most versatile. She beat Ria Mia earlier this year. Then ran an even race in the uh, Emerald Downs, but uh, it's taken a while to get her back to the races. She looks good here in the paddock. Silvino will be aboard, looking for back-to-back -back wins. Five to two on Wanda Lita. Four will be Belcara Park. Big daughter of Outwork, uh, out of the George Gilbert's mare Windstorm, who won a lot of stakes races with trainer Dave Forrester. Mile on the 16th is a tricky part for her. She got caught up in a wicked speed duel with uh, Bold Arch last time, winning against the boys. Helping out her stable mate, uh, smart lad, win that day. Scott will be aboard. I think she'll get the lead in here. It's just a matter of how hard she has to work to get it. Got to conserve herself because she's got to get that extra quarter mile. Because the mile of 16th, as I said, is not really her forte. 
Yeah, number five will be pretty area. Don't mind her at all. She doesn't need the lead. She can sit the trip in behind horses. Amadeo has won from off the pace on her in the past. Mind you, that was for 12-5, but... Took a trip over to Edmonton to run in the Shirley Vargo, but ended up a good fourth that day, beating less than two lengths. It's not their strongest division, the older mares. Mind me, plum blue and tone it up are not the superstars, but uh, they were that day of the older mare division. Dance Shoes ran last, I think, that day. A pretty area is pretty consistent here at Hastings. She's a nice mare. All right, there's a look at five very competitive uh, $25,000 fillies and mares going a mile and 16th. an optional claimer, a non-four lifetime. There's only one that fits the allowance condition. That's Belcara Park. The balance of the field are in for claiming prices. And we're kicking off that pick four. Just the one scratch in the pick four that's in today's sixth race. Scratch the four, Bazinga Karma. That's in race number six. Scratch the four, Bazinga Karma. All right, good luck. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number four. Veal of five to go a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor, triactor, and 20 cent pick four wagering. The pick four guaranteed at $20,000. Post time, four minutes away. Here's the field for the fourth. Number one, Ria Mia, owned by Christine Amon, the rider, Kamal Santo. Two is Shamra, owned by the Sapphire Stables and Ted Feenstra, Ridge Balgovin aboard. Three, one, Delita, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, the rider, Silvino Morales. Number four, Belcara Park, owned by George Gilbert, Scott Williams up. And number five, Pretty Area. By the Ironside Stables Limited, Amadeo Perez aboard. Three minutes to post time. All right, time for the $20,000 guaranteed pick four here at Hastings, sponsored by Twinspires.com for Saturday, July 15th. Mike and I agree in the first leg with one, two, and three. I've got four, five in the second with one, five, with one, four, five for 720. Mike's gone two, four, five in the second leg with one, three, with one, two, five for 1080. No keys today. That is the guaranteed $20,000 pick four here at Hastings, sponsored by Twinspires.com. Let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. Just two minutes here from the guaranteed $20,000 pick four pool. So get those wagers in as quickly as possible. You got to look there at Dan and Mike's tickets. I'm going to number two, Shamra, in here. She's two for four on this season. The only time she has not hit the top three board is when she's tried her luck at Stakes Company. Coming back into that $25,000 level, I think that she will be one in with a really good shot here. Number one, Ria Mia has a lot of natural speed there and the rail advantage here today. She missed the break last time in the Mana. She get a little bit of class relief here and hopefully be able to get a more comfortable lead just off of number four, Belcara Park, who will be trying to clear over. And rounding out my top three is number five, Pretty Area. This filly went and ran 
uh, last start in the Shirley Virgo in Edmonton where she ran fourth. However, she looked done, dug back in, and ran a really good effort that day. I think that this horse has a little more versatility than some of the other fillies and mares in here. If she's able to sit off some of that early fractions, look for her to make a good run late. I went 2-1-5 here in race number four, that guaranteed $20,000 pick four. Get your wagers in and best of luck. Just a couple of minutes away from post time for race four. Don't forget, this is the start of our $20,000 guaranteed pick four. The horses are approaching the starting gate. Last chance to get involved in that 20 cents. $20,000 guaranteed, pick four. The horses have reached the starting gate. Voting it now for the fourth at Hastings. First one up is Rhea Mia. Rhea Mia currently goes in at three to one. Shamra in the blue, seven to two. Juan Delita at three to one. Two left to load, Belcara Park and Pretty Area. Pretty Area to the outside, your lukewarm choice at eight to five. Bell Kara Park completes the line. 
five in. They're at the post. There they go. Well, Kara Park got away awkwardly, but now rushing through between runners to challenge Rhea Mia from the outside pretty area. Two and a half lengths back now is Shamra, and Juan Delita is your lead trailer. They're on the turn, and Rhea Mia has the lead from the rail. Pressing on the outside, Bell Kara Park. Pretty area has got a good seat in third. Then five lengths back is Shamra and Juan Delita. Opening quarter goes up in a very quick 22 and four through the stretch for the first time. Bell Kara Park on the outside pops ahead in front. Rhea Mia second by two. Pretty area third by two and a half, followed by Juan Delita and Shamra at the rail. Into the clubhouse turn they go. The half, a speedy 46 flat. As they head to the half mile marker, Rhea Mia from the rail by a head. Bell Kara Park second by two. Pretty area is third. Shamra now mounts her bid on the outside of Juan Delita. They're midway in the back stretch with three furlongs to run. And it's Rhea Mia, but there goes Shamra. And Shamra takes a short lead. Rhea Mia at the rail is pretty area. Juan Delita and Belcara Park. Six furlongs up and 112 flat. Quarter mile from home. And it's Shamra with the lead now by two. Rhea Mia in second, pretty area third. Juan Delita and Belcara Park, eighth of a mile from home, and it's homeward bound with Shamra with the lead. And down the lane they come. Shamra leads it by three. Pretty areas on the outside. Rhea Mia and Juan Delita. Shamra by three. Shamra will score. It'll be a battle for second. Rhea Mia is second. Pretty area third, followed by Juan Delita and Belcara Park. On the board, the unofficial winner of race four, number two, Shamra. Number one, Rhea Mia second. Five, Pretty Area third. And three, Juan Delita fourth. Two, one, five, three, unofficial. Please note there will be a stewards review in this fourth race. As the field headed down the back stretch, stewards review in progress. In the winner's enclosure, the winner of race four, number two, Shamra. Shamra is owned by the Sapphire Stables and Ted Feenstra, trained by Jim Loseth, assisted by Sandra Loseth, the winning rider, Ridge Balgobin.
Shamra is a four-year-old filly by Lent out of Honey Do Honey. Bred in BC by Sandra Losa. Please note the stewards review has been completed. They have ruled that number four, Belcara Park, caused its own problems in the backstretch. The result of race four is now official. Competitors for our fourth Wiener Dog Heat are moving on to the track and on to the grassed area. The competitors include number two, Molly for Michelle. Number three is Toast for April. Number four, Moose for Samantha. Five is Maisie May for Carrie Lee. Number six, Ninja for Juen. Number seven, Ranger for Michaela and Alex. Number eight, Maximilian for Suzanne. Number nine is Pocky for Yuki. Number 10, Houdini for Daniel. And number 11, Norm for Jake. The 2-1 exacta in race four returned 44.40. The try returned $81.70. All right, the competitors given their final instructions for our fourth heat. Once again, scratch the one. We do have a field of 10. All the dogs very keen to go. Stay behind the line. Keep your dogs behind that white line. All right, the flag is up. And the signal to start. Whoa, very quick. Very quick, it's the eight. Max a million was very quick across the line. There's the replay. And it is eight and six. Eight, Max a million moves on to the final. And number six, Ninja also moves on to the final.
right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number five here at Hastings. Fifth race does uh, kick off the late pick three. If you didn't stay alive in the pick four, you got to pick three here on races five, six, and seven. Also, Exacta, Triactor, Superfectas. Win play show. Got it all here in race number five. Got six $8,000 fillies and mares. No, on three lifetime, they're going six and a half. Well, congratulations to uh, the Sapphire Stables, ten, Ted Feenstra, trainer Jim Loseth, assisted by his wife Sandra, as they beat their daughter, Christine Amon, with Ria Mia. With her. But, uh, Shammer wins it with Ridge Balgobin up, cleverly ridden from off the pace, loop the field on the back stretch, and was tired late, but uh, found the line ahead of a bunch of Phillies and Mares really didn't want to go along. 146 and 3, or 2 was the final time. 146, 56 is the final. Shammer again today, getting her third winner of the season. All right, here's the one. This is Carla's Honor for Brian Albertson's BFA Holdings. Uh, Cindy Krasner trains, the daughter of uh, Race Day. She has some speed. Got the one hole. Well, didn't use it last time because there was a bunch of speed. They had another runner in there in Indiana who went to the front and Tam Tricky. Those two kind of set the pace together and Carla's Honor was content to sit in behind them. But with no stable made of Indiana in here, I think they'll be pretty close to the pace. And you got the rail. You kind of got to go. You're getting caught in behind horses sometimes is a little difficult. But uh, off of her Woodbine races, she's in with a very good chance here. I don't know why she's 11 to 1. She's certainly a better chance than that. Fraser's been riding really well and currently a good number. 10 to 1. Double digit odds on Carla's honor. Number 2 will be 9 o'clock Caesar. Crushed a group of maiden eights in her first start this year. Came back two weeks later. That was a tough 12-5 non-2, that Koala Bellaroo Queen of Attitude race. That was dirty tough. This is miles easier for 9 o'clock Caesar. She is a, a lot better horse than it looks like on paper. She should get respect, and she's getting it. She's the second choice at 7-2. to two. Jose Gomez rides again for Sean Lawson in the Willow Creek Farms. Probably going to show speed. I, I would think this horse to be on the lead in this spot. There's not a pile of speed in here. There is speed, but there's, you know, horses that elect to take off it. But I would think 9 o'clock Caesar would be one pressing the pays. That's how she won, wire to wire. Why mess with the horse's running style? Just couldn't quite get out there last time. They were pretty quick, uh, Koala and others in there. But uh, a significant drop for 9 o'clock Caesar, although it looks like she's up in class, she is not. She's running against a, a lot easier today. Number three will be a Visenya for Stu Carmichael and Mark Cluche. <laughs> Makes her first start of the year. Always tough to run against horses your on your first start. They've had a bunch of races under their belts. Work tab, been okay. Nothing to... You know, uh, to tip you off that she's going to run huge today. The one plus in her corner, she's got Amadeo. That's always a good thing. And she knows how to win races. She's two for eight lifetime. She's been running against far tougher the last two seasons. This is a significant class drop for her. Five to one on... Uh, a Visenya, another one that has some speed and could be close to the pace. Number four will be Tam Tricky. She's going to go out there. Uh, it's no, I don't think any secrets. I know they rated her a bit last time off of Indiana, but Indiana was just pretty good that day. Ended up running second. Similar effort, probably wins her the money today. She will be a pace presence, and she is at 7-2. to two. That's the four, Tam Tricky. 
Camille Santo rides for the Win Racing Stables and trainer Larry Grieve. Definitely your horse to beat. Looks very good here in the paddock. Five will be Amanda for Brian and Carol Anderson. Drops from the 16 non-threes into the 8 non-threes. That is a one-step drop. I know it's a half price, but it's a one-step drop for any horses. Just can't beat the Love Above and Beyonds and Indigo Golds and Shamras. This obviously is a lot easier test for her. And if the pace scenario is right, she's going to be tough to hold off. She's the logical horse to come from off the pace. She doesn't have the speed that others possess. But if some, someone gets away on her, like Tam Tricky, well then she's going to run second again. She's had an affinity for running second. She has seven seconds in 12 trips to the post. But she seldom runs a bad race. The only time she's been off the board in her ten, 12 starts are in the sales stakes and in the CD Diamond Futurity. So two stakes races she's been off the board. Pretty honest uh, filly is Amanda. And number six will be penalty to Rangers. Made a triumphant return to the races three weeks ago. Under Antonio Reyes easily uh, wiring a field of uh, $8,000 maidens. This test is obviously tougher, but she might be up to the task. Scott Williams subbing for Antonio, of course, is in Edmonton. Getting ready to get on a plane tomorrow morning to come home. No races today in Edmonton. Acid test for penalty to Rangers. She could be good enough. She ran a good time. That was a good time that day. One eighteen and two. She she was afforded a very easy lead in twenty two and four, forty seven and two. Huge breather there, but she sprinted home nicely. Probably going to be near the lead. Did you feel the six? Phillies and mares, 8,000 to 10,000 claimers. They're going six and a half furlongs, kicking off your late pick three. It's 4 5 2 for me. I think the four and five are. Four, five, two, those are my three. I think all three are interchangeable. All right, time for post braid for race number five. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number five, field of six to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, and pick three. Wagering, post time six minutes away. Here's the field number one, Carla's Honor, owned by BFA Holdings, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Two, nine o'clock, Caesar, in the colors of the Willow Creek Farms. Jose Gomez up. Three is Visenya, owned by Stuart Carmichael, Amadeo Perez riding. 
Excuse from post parade, Tam Tricky, owned by Win Racing Stables, Kamal Santo Riding. Five is Amanda, owned by Dr. Brian and Carol Anderson, Silvino Morales aboard. And number six, Penalty to Rangers, owned by John Anderson and Catherine Anderson. Scott Williams up. Four minutes to post time. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses have reached the starting gate. Starting it now for the fifth. Last one up to the outside gate. Penalty to Rangers. Six in. They're at the post. Damn tricky, very restless on the gate. There they go. They've all come away well, but from the outside, penalty to Rangers on the early lead. Now Tam Tricky moves through at nine o'clock Caesar right there. Three lengths back now to another trio of Carlos, Honor, Vizenia, and Amanda on the outside. As they go to the clubhouse turn, nine o'clock Caesar has the lead now by a length and a half. Tam Tricky second by three quarters of a length. Penalty to Rangers on the outside third by two and a half. At the rail is Carlos, Honor. Amanda's on the outside about five off the lead. Trailer is Vizenia. Opening quarter of Rapid, 21 and four. Three furlongs from home, and nine o'clock Caesar leads it. Tam Tricky right there. Amanda's weaving her way through. On the outside now is penalty to Rangers. At the rail is Carla's honor and Vizenia. Half, 45 and four. Three sixteenths from home, and it's still nine o'clock Caesar with the lead. Tam Tricky, Amanda's now trying to get through on the inside as they turn for home. It is on the inside, nine o'clock Caesar. Here's Amanda skimming the rail. Tam Tricky, far outside by Zenia. Nine o'clock Caesar trying to hold off Amanda. They hit the wire, it will be Amanda to win it. Nine o'clock Caesar second, Tam Tricky third, photo for fourth. Photo sign posted. Please hold all tickets. In the photo number five, Amanda, the unofficial winner. Number two, nine o'clock, Caesar second. Number four, Tam Tricky was third. And number three, Vizenia fourth. Five, two, four, three on the board. And don't forget, following post parade of today's sixth race, it'll be the 50-50 draw. Please note, you must be in attendance and claim your prize within 15 minutes or another ticket will be drawn. So do not throw away your 50-50 tickets after the first draw, until we announce it's been claimed.
In the winner's enclosure, the winner of race five, number five, Amanda. Owned by Dr. Brian and Carol Anderson, trained by Barb Heads, the winning rider, Silvino Morales. Amanda is a four-year-old filly by Sun Gold out of Marcato. Bred in BC by the BC Stables. The result has now been declared official. The price is now up. The exactor was $33.30. $2 try was ninety-two thirty. 20 cents super in 1967. And to pick three, you need three of three. Dollar price, 156.35. Final running time was 118 and 27. 100. Now crossing the track, our final heat today, heat five of our Wiener Dog Racing. Let's introduce the field. Number one is Lola for Jake. Number two is Cooper for Tom and Marie. Scratch the three, Beans. Number four is Isabel for Billy and Kelly. Number five is Clyde for Karen. Six is Coco for Chanel. Number seven, Libby for Jess. Number eight, Lacey for Jennifer. Number nine will be Penelope for Claire. And number 10, Timbit for May. We do have a field of nine to close out our final heat. All the people have been given their final cues. Now the flag is up for our fifth and final heat, 2023 Wiener Dog Race. And the signal is given from the outside. There's Timbit. Timbit now forges to the front. Going to be close for a second between Coco and Penelope. All right, the unofficial winner of the fifth heat, number 10, Timbit. Number nine, Penelope was second. Six, Coco was third. So Timbit and Penelope move on to the final heat after our next race.
right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number six on our seven race program today. Got a field of five. $25,000 maidens. Scratch the four. Mazinga Karma. Left with five. To go six and a half furlongs. First half of your late daily double. We also have exacta triactor and superfecta wagering. Well, good run from Amanda under Silvino Morales. A brazen, bold move down on the inside, and he needed to do everything right to get up by the bob of a nose over a very stubborn 9 o'clock Caesar. But Amanda gets narrowly gets the job done for Brian and Carol Anderson and trainer Barbara Heads and Silvino Morales. All right, number one is An Army of Light. Peter Redekop and Barb again. Showing good speed in his races in California last year as a three-year-old. In their bottom level claimers. Tried him on turf, tried him on dirt. It's taken him a while to get to the races, but he's in this 25 today. Blinkers have been removed for his first start. Doesn't face the toughest maiden $25,000 crew, though. Amadeo Perez has been aboard for his, I believe, his last three works. So he's been familiar with an army of light. And there he is, bandaged all the way around. Likely going to be the pace setter in here, I would think. There isn't much speed in here at all. So I think Amadeo is going to try and put this guy on the lead. Four-year-old tackling all three-year-olds. Currently six to five on the board is an army of light and my top pick. I think everyone kind of agrees that an army of light is going to be pretty tough in here. Number two will be Kiki's Sundancer. First are for Marty Miller and Edgar Mendoza. Last couple of works have been good and 101 and change. The son of Gormley. What a thirty-five thousand dollar purchase at the sale last year or two years ago. He will debut in uh, front bandages, blinkers. Getting some play at three to one. Camille Santo will ride. Got a lot of equipment on shadow roll, blinkers. Doesn't strike me as a speed horse, though, like you would hope the horse would be. Number three will be Cairo Crusader for the RNH Racing Stables on his toes. Blinkers off today. A couple of runs this year. I know they've tried to get him in long. The long races haven't been filling. So the, he's already had to wait uh, five weeks to run. So uh, they're going to sprint him one more time, hoping uh, that eventually a mile on the 16th will go just to find out if that's going to be his what he's, what's going to bring out the best in him but he seems to be a one paced runner that uh, hasn't been able to stay with the uh, Tappet's Choice and Wicked Knight but those horses are better than what he's facing today he's interesting in here as well he shouldn't be 9 to 1 he's certainly a better chance than that his comeback work was very good in a minute and three fifths Another Barb Heads trainee. She's got the one and the three in here. Number five will be Crown Council. Been a little on edge here in the paddock. It's the one run this year. It was an emerald. Missed the start, rushed up, got into some contention, and then flattened out late. But that was in a maiden special. Well, they ran pretty fast. Maybe it's hard to tell at Emerald, 115 and 4. That may be slow there, but as times go, that's very quick. Karen Kellowan will ride Crown Council for Rob and Vicky Gilker. Got Rob on the head, head end there. He's definitely had to call on all of his strength to uh, get this guy around the paddock. Homebred out of their mare, Scream Queen, who was very nice. She was a pretty nice mare. 
had some speed. Not much respect. 10 to 1. The horse should be less than that. The horse can't be 10 to 1. She is not the longest shot on the board. I mean, she shouldn't be. And number six will be my man, Stan, for the Renfrew Racing Stables, B&B Racing, Eugene Chan, and the Breen Racing Stable, Mark Freeman Conditions. Good run in his Hastings debut, ran into another California horse uh, in Azov Sea. My man, Stan, started his career at Golden Gate before being claimed and brought north to Emerald. Ran a couple of races there and came up here and just missed to Azov Sea. And beating next out winner English Bay Teddy. But those are all lesser claiming. Like English Bay Teddy, I believe, came back to win a maiden eight. He's up here for 25. This is a, obviously tougher for my man Stan. But as I said off the top, this is not a top maiden 25. You didn't hook a, you know, a maiden allowance horse dropping that ran third or fourth in a tough maiden allowance heat. You're not hooking that kind of horse in here. It's come up pretty, pretty light. And so he's a player. And he is two to one. And Silvino Morales looking for back-to-back -back victories. All right, there's your field of five. $25,000 maidens kicking off your late daily double. Exacta Triactor Super Vector Wagering. Once again, scratch the four, Bazinga Karma. I went one, uh, three, and five. One, three, five. I did leave out the six. I don't know why, but I did. I didn't want to leave out Crown Council. And All right, good luck here in the sixth. Riders are just coming out. We're going to have post parade here shortly. Hey, horses on the track at Hastings, race number six. Field of five now, scratch the four, Bazinga Karma. They're going to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, 
and late daily double wagering starts here. Post time, six minutes away. Excuse from post parade to six. My man stands. Here's the field number one, an army of light. Owned by Peter Cup AC Limited, Amadeo Perez in the saddle. Two, Kiki Sundancer. Owned by Marty Miller with Kamal Santo aboard. Three, Cairo Crusader, owned by the RNH Stable, the rider Ridge, Val Gobin. Five, Crown Council, owned by Robin Vicky Gilker with Kiran Kelawan. And the six, My Man Stan, owned by Renfrew Racing, BB Racing, Eugene Chan, and Brain Racing, Silvino Morales to ride. Five minutes to post time. Time for our 50 50 draw. Let's go down to the paddock. And Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. I'm joined by Marcus here from the downtown Eastside neighborhood house. The winner today gets $1,045. We're going to get a good shake here, draw that winning ticket. Just a reminder, you have 15 minutes to claim your prize. If a winner is not drawn, hold on to those tickets and head back over to the blue tent. All right, the winning numbers are... Uh, and it is three zero five one three four three seven again that's three zero five one three four three seven one thousand and forty five dollars is yours to claim head on over to that blue hastings tent by the winner's circle and again hold on to your tickets because if the prize is not claimed in 15 minutes there will be two redraws All right, there's a look at the 50-50 draw number 305-134-37. It's worth $1,045, the downtown Eastside Neighborhood House. Thanks you for your generous donations today. You've got 15 minutes from now to claim your prize at the blue tent just outside the winner's enclosure. Once again, 305-134-37, worth $1,045. If this prize is not claimed in 15 minutes, there will be a redraw. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Less than a minute. Just a reminder, live racing continues tomorrow. First race will be 2 p.m. And don't forget, one week today, we do have a ticketed event here at Hastings. For more information, go to comegetfancy.com. Following next Saturday's races, we're back to our regular free admission at the track. Just to note, the 50-50 draw for the downtown Eastside neighborhood house. The winner has shown up. The prize has been claimed. The horses have reached the starting gate. Out again now for the sixth at Hastings. They've opened the gates for number five, Crown Council. Crown Council now coaxed in, goes in without the rider. Kiran Kelawan will remount inside the gate. Inside gate, an army of light.
Kiki Sundancer goes in. Cairo Crusader, gate three, the outside gate. My man Stan. Three to five on an army of light. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Cairo Crusader, an army of light and my man Stan is asked for speed from the far outside. Crown Council's right there as they pass by us now for the first time. An army of light has the rail and the lead by a nose. My man stands second by two. Crown Council gets the run of the race in third. Three lengths for the back is Kiki Sundancer. Cairo Crusader is the trailer. Opening quarter, 22 and one. Past the half mile marker they go as they head for the back stretch. An army of light leads it from the rail by a neck. On the outside, my man stands second by a length and a half. Crown Council third by four, then Kiki Sundancer and Cairo Crusader. As they run to the 5 16 spark, it's an army of light with the lead. Half up, 46 flat, and now a quarter to home. An army of light leads it now by a little over a length. Crown Council moving into it only a length off it. My man stand. Cairo Crusader is trying to wind it up on the outside, and Kiki Sundancer, eighth of a mile from home. An army of light has a short lead. Crown Council, though, right there on the outside. Cairo Crusader, grandstand side. An army of light. Crown Council, an army of light will score. Crown Council second. Cairo Crusader third. My man Stan and Kiki Sundancer. On the board, then official winner, number one, an army of light. Number five, Crown Council second. Three, Cairo Crusader third. Six, my man Stan fourth. One, five, three, six on the board. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race six, number one, an army of light. He's owned by Peter Radikop, BC Limited, trained by Barb Heads, the winning rider, Amadeo Perez. An army of light is a four-year-old gelding by Carpe Diem out of Sunny Sammy. Bred in Kentucky by Nikki Dryan, Thoroughbreds, and Maka Bloods.
The result is official. The one five exact uh, two dollar price was eleven dollars and ninety cents. The try was twenty four seventy. The twenty cent super was three dollars and eighty four cents. Pick five, it did pay out five of five, three hundred fourteen dollars and eighty cents. Final running time one nineteen and ten one hundredths. We close out the Saturday card, race seven, field of seven to go a mile in the sixteenth. Most time twenty five minutes away at five thirty. All right, for your enjoyment, here's our final heat of the wiener dog races for this saturday top two competitors from the first five heats will compete let's introduce the field number one is walter number two ziggy piggy number three is darla number four nugget number five is nishi Six is worst. Number seven, Maximilian. Number eight, Ninja. Number nine is Timbit. And number 10 is Penelope. The odd number dogs were the winners of their heat. The even numbers were the second place finishers. All right, the dogs are on their mark. They're getting their final instructions. Once again, this race is judged by our stewards here at Hastings. Top prize, $250 for the top dog today. They're all in line. The flag is up. Now they go very close, it looks like, across the line. I think it might be Nishi in the green. Uh-oh, Walter's on the track and loose. All right, we got Walter on the track. Walter, return home, please. All right, we are waiting for the final decision. All right, Walter's got his owner and heading home. All right, here's the top three finishers in the finals of the Winner Dogs. The winner, number five, Nishi. Second, number six, Worst. And third, number one, Walter. I'd ask everyone to kindly move into the winner's enclosure for your group picture. But the top dog today is number five, Nishi, who was the winner of heat number three today for Phil Gray. Congratulations, Phil and Nishi. All 
All right, Nisha gets the winning ribbon and a blanket made up by our own Pat Jarvis that says the top dog of 2023. All right, very quickly, we're going to get Bailey Williams to go down to get a few words from the owner, which was Phil Gray and his winning prize, Nishi. Congratulations to all of our contestants here on Wiener Dog Day at Hastings. And don't forget, we do have the Corgis coming up in August.
All right, welcome back to the paddock here at Hastings. It's time for race number seven, our final live race on the day. Got to feel the seven. Phillies and Mares, 6250 claimers. They're going a mile and a 16th. So this is a long race. They'll start on the back stretch and hit the wire twice. You have Exacta, Triactor, Superfecta wagering. That's Super High Five also. Pick the first five. Congratulations to Peter Redekop, Barb Heads, Amadeo Perez, and Army of Light. Wires them. In race number six, holding off a very stubborn Crown Council. And Cairo Crusader ran a good third. But an Army of Light in his Hastings debut. Got the job done. Here's the one. This is Artistic Jeweler. I don't mind her at all today. I think there's going to be a pace. And she is not a one that's not going to be near the lead. She's dropping out of a 12-5 non-2 that featured Lola M, Miss the Hype, and Quality Command. This is a far easier race for her today. And she does like them on the 16th. She'll need to get back to her form of last fall, though which she was battling with Laugh With Me and other boys in marathon races. But she's got it in her. Like she's certainly a good chance. She's going to be held back early. She'll probably be last, which is fine. And then just produce one three-eighths of a mile run and see if it's good enough. Ridge Balgobin gets the ride. He rides those horses very well. He gets them to relax and then explode for that last three-eighths of a mile move. We'll see if she's got that good three-eighths of a mile move. Eight to one on Artistic Jeweler on the class drop. Two will be Zeta Marie. She won't be far away. She's one that likes to kind of dog the pace, and uh, especially going long. She won't be, she'll be right up in there. She's got a good inside draw. Gets in light with Apprentice Fraser Abley. It's a live, live runner. Good second Irish Luna last time. She's got to stay ahead of Irish Luna. That's the whole key. Can't be giving Irish Luna, letting her ahead of you. So tactics will be everything in here. But she has the ability with that inside draw, short run to the first turn, to get into a good spot and, and secure the rail behind the leaders. She's 7-2, to two, taking quite a bit of play. And she should take play for Hall of Famer Frank Baraby. Pretty nice mare throughout her career. Number three will be Harlan's Angel. Just finished wiring a field going long. She was up on a hot pace that day and with Anima, and those two pretty much had a match race from the gate to the wire. They ended up running in 146. It was a good time. There is other speed in here, though. Obviously, this race will be tougher for her. She does lose Amadeo to the five-horse Irish Luna. But gets Karen Kello on, who's riding very well right now. 17-1 to 1 on Harlan's Angel. Four will be ostracized. Taking a pretty big drop in class. This horse has run twice this year. Once in a non-two uh, sprinting allowance where she lost to uh, Kapaloo Candy and Mary's Tap and Shoes. Then ran against the boys. Kind of was a filler for her stablemate, Stay Fantastic. And trailed the field pretty much throughout in that race. But she's up close behind a very slow pace, but didn't run on. She's favorably placed today. I think she's definitely a player in here. Just worry that two uh, efforts so far this year, hopefully they haven't taken run out of her. But on her best day, she's every bit as good as these horses. Nine to one on ostracize. There we go. She's lit up. Five will be Irish Luna. Your even money favorite. She deserves the hype. She just finished beating this same group or same claiming price very nicely in 144 flat. She tracked a very fast pace, ran on. She did everything she needed to do, and uh, she was impressive. But she's one that's got some quirks about her, so I'm not surprised the connections don't jump her up in price. Because one would look on, uh, on the surface that, you know, why don't they jump her up to 12.5 or 10? 
Uh, for one, there are no 10 races going really long very often. And two, that this is where she fits. She's shown that. But she's very good going long, and if she runs that same race back, it's over. They're all running for second. Amadeo Perez looking for his third winner on the day. Even money. One to one on Irish Luna. Number six will be the gray silk stilettos. She was the one setting the pace that day. She hung on tough, just got nailed late by Zita Marie for second. While 144 flat is a very fast time, you can tell the track was very quick that day because Zita Marie and Zilk Stilettos have never run close to 144 in their lives, and neither has Irish Luna, and the three of them were all, you know, within three lengths. They were in 144 and three for Silk Stilettos, and that's uncharted territory for her, but... But she's still game when she gets the lead, but there is other speed. She's got to avoid a pace tool. Maybe she can. Maybe she can clear, and they leave her alone. If that's the case, she's usually pretty tough to come and catch. Scott Williams a ride. He's been aboard for that nice six-length win earlier this year. For Don Tadarenko, had a nice winner with Just Jimmy uh, a couple weeks back. And he's in tomorrow in an allowance race. And number seven will be Don't Pass the Pepper. Narrow loss to I'm a Daredevil. Battle on the pace. 22 and 2, 45 and 2. Just got nailed late. She ran too good to lose. That was a big effort in, a, in her first up run here at Hastings. She hadn't run in six months. She'd been campaigning in Phoenix. She's used to going long, at least on the turf anyway. She did run second in a dirt race there, an off the turf race on January 3rd. She fits here, but she's another one that's got to avoid a pace duel. There's some fillies in here that are very fast, and it's going to be interesting how the pace scenario plays out. And how the pace scenario plays out will probably dictate who wins the money. And uh, one horse that can probably adapt to it all is the five, Irish Luna, who will be very, very tough to beat. She's your six to five favorite. And that's where I'm leaning. I went five, two, and one. Good luck, everyone, here in the last. Don't forget, we're racing here tomorrow. First race at 2 o'clock. Seven more thrillers for you. A couple good allowance for you. You've got a really good card tomorrow. Last year's Horse of the Year, uh, Infinite Patience, is in the lineup tomorrow. Lots of really nice horses coming in the paddock, so please try and be with us tomorrow on Sunday. First race at 2. The horses on the track at Hastings for our seventh and final event. It's a field of seven to go a mile in a 16th. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, and 20 cents Super High Five wagering. Post time, five minutes away. Here's the field number one, Artistic Jeweler, owned by Praven Sorensen and Mort Hall, the rider Ridge Balgobin. Two, Zeta Marie, owned by Gary Johnson, Pumpkin and Charlie Stables. Apprentice Fraser Abley in the saddle. Number three, Harlan's Angel, owned by Jim and Ann Allendahl with Kieran Kellawan riding. Four, Ostracize, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, Silvino Morales aboard. Five is Irish Luna, owned by the Willow Creek Farms. Amadeo Perez takes the call. Six is Silk Stilettos, owned by Don Tedarenko. Scott Williams up. And number seven, Don't Pass the Pepper, owned by Wynn Racing Stables. Kimal Sento aboard. Four minutes to post time. All right, for the final time today, let's go down to the paddock area and Bailey Williams. 
Thank you, Dan. Just four minutes here from the finale. A field of seven to go a mile and a sixteenth to wrap up a Saturday card. Number six, six, Silk Stilettos. I have her in my show spot. She's one that if can get cleared over and settled on a nice pace there early, she could go from gate to wire. Number two, Zita Marie will be looking to challenge that early pace, however, and does have an inside advantage to Silk Stilettos. Rounding out, or I guess the winner in here, I think, will be number five, even money on the tote board, and that is Irish Luna. Four starts, two wins, and a second. The only up poor finish of the year was on a sloppy track, so the track is favoring today to that fast, good track. She will be in behind that early pace setting, looking to make a late run. Amadeo Perez looking for his third winner on the card. Three minutes to make your wager, and make sure to join us again live racing tomorrow. First race is at 2 p.m., and the Mustang Car Show will be on the tarmac. Hope you can join us. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
the horses have reached the starting gate. Loading in now for the nightcap as we wrap up our winter day, day dogs here at the races. Artistic Jeweler, the first one up. Zeta Marie goes into gate two, followed by Harlan's Angel. Then it's Ostracize. Irish Luna. Silk Stilettos. The outside gate, don't pass the pepper. Seven in, they're at the post. There they go. Artistic jeweler hopped a little in the air at the break. But there goes Irish Luna, Luna out for the early lead. Silk Stilettos is now tracking up on the outside. Harlan's Angel gets away in third. At the rail, Zeta Marie. On the outside is Ostracized. Don't pass the pepper. An artistic jeweler is the early trailer. As they get set to sweep by us now for the first time, it's Silk Stilettos with a two and a half length lead. From the outside, Harlan's Angel. From the inside, it's Irish Luna. It's two lengths back to Ostracized, sitting in fourth. Don't pass the pepper. Zeta Marie, an artistic jeweler. Opening quarter, a sensible 24 and 1. As they go to the clubhouse turn, it's Silk Stilettos with the lead. Silk Stilettos leads it by two and a half. Harlan's Angel on the outside. Saving ground at the rail is Irish Luna. Ostracized now on her outside. Don't pass the pepper. Two back in fifth. Sixth is Artistic Jeweler. Seventh, Zeta Marie. Half and up, 47 and three. Now three furlongs from home. Silk Stiletto, still no challengers, leads it by two and a half. Irish Luna's at the rail. On the outside, Harlan's Angel, ostracized. Artistic Jeweler now into the bit and closing ground. Six furlongs, 112 and three. Three sixteenths from home, they have to come and catch Silk Stiletto's as she leads it by three. Irish Luna, Artistic Jeweler, ostracized as they turn for home. Silk Stiletto's by three. Irish Luna trying to get her in the lane. On the outside, Artistic Jeweler. On the inside, Ostracized. Silk Stilettos. Here's Irish Luna, one last surge. Silk Stilettos to win it. Irish Luna second. It'll be Ostracized third. Artistic Jeweler completing the super high five, Zeta Marie. On the board, the unofficial winner for a seven, number six, Silk Stilettos. Five, Irish Luna second. Four, Ostracized third. One, Artistic Jeweler fourth, completing the super high five, the two, Zeta Marie. On the board, it's six, five, four, one, and two.
Into the winner's enclosure, the winner for race seven, number six, Silk Stilettos. She's owned by Don Tedarenko, trained by Craig McPherson. The winning rider, Scott Williams. Silk Stilettos is a four-year-old filly by Oxbow out of native talent, bred in Kentucky by the Calumet Farm. The result is official. Six five exacta was thirty dollars. The two dollar try was two forty eight. Twenty cent super one eighteen sixty seven. Pick four you need four of four was forty four ninety four. Super high five was hit for one thousand sixty eight dollars sixty eight cents. Late double of one and six was twenty six thirty. And the pick three dollar price thirty eight dollars. Final running time. For the mile and the 16th, 144 and 84, 100. That'll wrap up our Saturday card here at Hastings. We hope you enjoyed the live card and the wiener dog races. Live racing continues here tomorrow with Mustangs on the tarmac. First race tomorrow will be 2 p.m. Thank you for watching and wagering on Hastings Racecourse. Drive safely. Don't forget our simulcast facility remains open until 10 p.m. Once again, thank you. Drive safely. Good night.
There they go. Valerie Valeski, quick at the break and on the early late. From the outside now, here comes Just Misty rolling up on the outside. It's Auntie J at the rail in third, followed by Kay's Kitchen and Texas Humor. As they go to the clubhouse turn, trying to hold the rail is Auntie J pressing on the outside, Just Misty. It's two lengths back to Valerie Valeski. Three lengths from the back is Kay's Kitchen and three to Texas Humor. Pass a half mile marker they go, opening quarter, 22 and one. As they head down the back stretch, from the outside, Just Misty pops ahead in front. Auntie J, second by two. Valerie Valeski, ridden along now in third. Two and a half legs back is Kay's Kitchen and now three and a half to Texas Humor. As they race towards the quarter pole, the half, 45 and three. And now Just Misty has taken the lead. Valerie Valeski rolling up on the outside. Kay's Kitchen, three off it in third. Losing ground at the rail is Auntie J. Trailer is Texas Humor. As they turn for home, it is now with the lead, Just Misty. But here's Kay's Kitchen, rambling up on the outside. Kay's Kitchen now strikes the front. It's Kay's Kitchen to win the opener. Just Misty second, Valerie Valeski third, Texas Humor and Auntie J. There they go. From the rail, a Nami put on the early lead. Right there is back zone Racino. Another sunny day on the far outside. Early trailer walking the walk. As they go under the line for the first time, it is a Nami from the rail. Back zone pressing and three deep. There goes another sunny day. It's two lengths back down to Racino in fourth, and three back is walking the walk. As they go into the turn, the opening quarter, 23 flat. Half mile to run, and from the inside, Anami leads it by a nose. Right there, back zone, second by two. Another sunny day, third by two and a half. Racino is fourth by about five, and walk in the walk, the trailer. As they run to the 516 Sparker, Anami from the rail with the lead, back zone pressing on the outside. Half, 46 and two, quarter mile from home, and it is Anami with the lead. Back zone second, another sunny day. Racino's three off and in fourth, and now walking the walk starting to close ground as they turn for home. It's Anami now by two, and down the lane they come. Anami leads it by two, another sunny day. Here's Racino far outside. Anami, Racino walking the walk. Anami will win it. Racino second, another sunny day. Walking the walk, and back zone. There they go. Hartley Manor from the outside catches a flyer and opens a two length lead. Moving up on the far outside is Beckett's Best. Now down at the rail is Dreaming Dioro. In between them is Stormy Runner, Icy Copy, and Rick Stencer. Into the far turn they go, and Hartley Manor has opened up by two. Dreaming Dioro pushed along in second on the outside. Beckett's Best in third. 
Four lengths back now is Stormy Runner. Up the turn into the stretch. And Hartley Manor leads it by two and a half. Dreaming Dioro wins second on the outside. Beckett's Best is third. Deep stretch. It's Hartley Manor winning the debut by three. Very close for second. Dreaming Dioro. Beckett's Best. And a late closing Stormy Runner. Followed by Rick Stancer and Icy Copy. There they go. Bill Kara Park got away awkwardly, but now rushing through between runners to challenge Rhea Mia from the outside pretty area. Two and a half lengths back now is Shamra, and Juan Delita is your lead trailer. They're on the turn, and Rhea Mia has the lead from the rail. Pressing on the outside, Bill Kara Park. Pretty area has got a good seat in third. Then five lengths back is Shamra and Juan Delita. Opening quarter goes up in a very quick 22 and four through the stretch for the first time. Bell Kara Park on the outside pops ahead in front. Rhea Mia second by two. Pretty area third by two and a half, followed by Juan Delita and Shamra at the rail. Into the clubhouse turn they go. The half, a speedy 46 flat as they head to the half mile marker. Rhea Mia from the rail by a head. Bell Kara Park second by two. Pretty area is third. Shamra now mounts her bid on the outside of Juan Delita. They're midway in the back stretch with three furlongs to run. And it's Rhea Mia, but there goes Shamra. And Shamra takes a short lead. Rhea Mia at the rail is pretty area. Juan Delita and Belcara Park. Six furlongs up and 112 flat. Quarter mile from home. And it's Shamra with the lead now by two. Rhea Mia in second, pretty area third. Juan Delita and Belcara Park, eighth of a mile from home, and it's homeward bound with Shamra with the lead. And down the lane they come. Shamra leads it by three. Pretty areas on the outside. Rhea Mia and Juan Delita. Shamra by three. Shamra will score. It'll be a battle for second. Rhea Mia is second. Pretty area third, followed by Juan Delita and Belcara Park. There they go. They've all come away well, but from the outside, penalty to Rangers on the early lead. Now Tam Tricky moves through, and nine o'clock sees her right there. Three lengths back now to another trio of Carlos, Honor, Vizenia, and Amanda on the outside. As they go to the clubhouse turn, nine o'clock sees her has the lead now by a length and a half. Tam Tricky second by three quarters of a length. Penalty to Rangers on the outside, third by two and a half. At the rail is Carla's honor. Amanda's on the outside, about five off the lead. Trailer is Vizenia. Opening quarter of Rapid, 21 and four. Three furlongs from home, and nine o'clock Caesar leads it 
Tam Tricky right there. Amanda's weaving her way through. On the outside now is penalty to Rangers. At the rail is Carla's honor and by Zenya. Half 45 and four, three sixteenths from home. And it's still nine o'clock. Caesar with the lead. Tam Tricky. Amanda's now trying to get through on the inside. As they turn for home, it is on the inside. Nine o'clock Caesar. Here's Amanda skimming the rail. Tam Tricky, far outside by Zenya. Nine o'clock Caesar trying to hold off Amanda. They hit the wire. It will be Amanda to win it. Nine o'clock Caesar second. Tam Tricky third. Photo for fourth. There they go. Cairo Crusader, an army of light and mime and stand, is asked for speed from the far outside. Crown Council's right there as they pass by us now for the first time. An army of light has the rail and the lead by a nose. My man stands second by two. Crown Council gets the run of the race in third. Three lengths for the back is Kiki Sundancer. Cairo Crusader is the trailer. Opening quarter, 22 and one. Past the half mile marker they go as they head for the back stretch. An army of light leads it from the rail by a neck. On the outside, my man stands second by a length and a half. Crown Council third by four, then Kiki Sundancer and Cairo Crusader. As they run to the 5-16 spark, it's an army of light with the lead. Half up, 46 flat, and now a quarter to home. An army of light leads it now by a little over a length. Crown Council moving into it only a length off it. My man stand, Cairo Crusaders trying to wind it up on the outside. And Kiki Sundancer, eighth of a mile from home. An army of light has a short lead. Crown Council though, right there on the outside. Cairo Crusader, grandstand side. An army of light. Crown Council, an army of light will score. Crown Council second. Cairo Crusader third, my man Stan, and Kiki Sundancer. There they go. Artistic jeweler hopped a little in the air at the break. But there goes Irish Luna, Luna out for the early lead. Silk Stilettos is now tracking up on the outside. Harlan's Angel gets away in third. At the rail, Zita Marie on the outside is ostracized. Don't pass the pepper. An artistic jeweler is the early trailer. As they get set to sweep by us now for the first time, it's Silk Stilettos with a two and a half length lead. From the outside, Harlan's Angel. From the inside, it's Irish Luna. It's two lengths back to Ostracize, sitting in fourth. Don't pass the pepper. Zeta Marie, an artistic jeweler. Opening quarter, a sensible 24 and one. As they go to the clubhouse turn, it's Silk Stilettos with the lead. Silk Stilettos leads it by two and a half. Harlan's Angel on the outside, 
Saving ground at the rail is Irish Luna. Ostracized now on her outside. Don't pass the pepper. Two back in fifth. Sixth is Artistic Jeweler. Seventh, Zeta Marie. Half and up, 47 and three. Now three furlongs from home. Silk Stiletto, still no challengers. Leaked by two and a half. Irish Luna's at the rail. On the outside, Harlan's Angel. Ostracized. Artistic Jeweler now into the bit and closing ground. Six furlongs, 112 and three. Three sixteenths from home. They have to come and catch Silk Stilettos as she leads it by three. Irish Luna, Artistic Jeweler, ostracized as they turn for home. Silk Stilettos by three. Irish Luna trying to get her in the lane. On the outside, Artistic Jeweler. On the inside, ostracized. Silk Stilettos. Here's Irish Luna, one last surge. Silk Stilettos to win it. Irish Luna second. It'll be ostracized third. Artistic Jeweler. Completing the Super High Five, Zeta Marie.